What's up, Constant Readers? Today I will be taking you on a guided tour of The Gunslinger by Stephen King, and there are three things that you need to know as we go on our quest for the Dark Tower. One, we are using the revised edition of The Gunslinger rather than the original. Two, I'll be referring to Randall Flagg as Flagg, the Man in Black, and Martin. And three, I'll be referring to Roland as both Roland and the Gunslinger. Gunslinger. So we have the revised edition of the Gunslinger, Flag, who is also the Man in Black and Martin, and Roland, who is also the Gunslinger. Let the story begin. Chapter 1 the Gunslinger. Roland chases the Man in Black into the desert because he believes that the Man in Black can tell him something that will help him on his quest for the Dark Tower. As he pursues the Man in Black, he comes to the hut of a man named Brown, a farmer, and Roland sits down with the man. They talk, and Brown tells Roland that Flag had also recently been through and that he talked with him. This tells Roland that he's not far behind Flag. After they chat, Roland naps while Brown cooks their dinner. Brown wakes Roland from sleep and tells him that while he was snoozing, his mule died and that Zoltan, Brown's sinister singing raven, has feasted on the poor mule's eyes. The two eat their supper and afterward, Roland tells Brown a story about his time in the town of Tull. The narrative now turns to the memory of Roland. Roland rides into the town of Tull and first sees a man named Kennerly who owns a stall for horses. Roland pays the man a gold coin to take care of his mule, and he then goes on into the town alone, leaving the mule behind. He finds a honky-tonk and sits at the bar ordering three hamburgers from the bartender and owner, a woman named Alice, and a man named Shimi, a bar worker, plays the piano in the background for the customers. The rest of the patrons become nervous because of Roland's presence and leave, all except for Nort, a man who is addicted to the drug weed grass. Nort talks with Roland and uses the high speech, something that surprises the gunslinger, and the gunslinger gives Nort a gold coin. After Roland finishes with the weed eater, he turns to Alice. Roland wants information about the man in black, and Alice agrees to talk with him in exchange for sex. After they couple, Alice tells Roland that Flag had recently been at her honky-tonk as well. She tells him about Flag's time in Toll. The narrative goes to the memory of Alice. As Flag arrives in Toll, he goes to Alice's honky-tonk. Upon entering the door, he walks by the dead body of the weed-eater Nort, who had died from his abuse of the devil grass. Flag orders whiskey and pays with silver. While he's there, he puts on a show of resurrecting the dead man. Nort comes back to life, and not long after that, Flag departs. Later that evening, Nort talks with Alice, and he tells her that the man in black left him with a piece of paper for her. He hands her the note, and she reads it. The note says that Flag has planted a magical word in Nort's mind. That word is 19. The paper says that if Alice speaks the word 19 to Nort, he will tell her about what he saw in the world beyond while he was dead. Flag signs the note, Walter O'Dim. After all of this, Alice gets very drunk. The narrative returns to the story that Roland is telling to Farmer Brown. Alice finishes telling her story to Roland, and the gunslinger warns her to never speak the word 19 to Nort if she treasures her sanity. He asks her if she knows what is to the south of Toll, and she says she doesn't know. He walks to the livestock stable and asks Kennerly if he knows what is to the south of the town. Kennerly says maybe a desert, maybe an ocean. Kennerly tells him that the world has moved on, and that the last times are upon them. Later, Roland and Alice are in her room together, Alice playing the fiddle, when Shimi breaks into the room, trying to stab Roland in a fit of jealousy over the gunslinger's closeness with Alice. Roland twists Shimi's wrists, making him drop the knife and hurting him badly. Roland recognizes Shimi from the distant past and a place called Megis, but he can't clearly recall who Shimi is. The three of them talk, 
Afterward, Shimi leaves Roland and Alice behind and walks out of the room in shame and embarrassment. The next night, the bar is closed and what passes for the Sabbath has come upon Toll. Most of the town head for the local church and a service performed there by the town pastor, Sylvia Pittston. Roland attends the service and Pittston sings and preaches and prays with the community and speaks of the evil interloper, meaning Roland, Flag poisoned Sylvia's mind against the gunslinger when he was in toll. She, like the man Kennerly, seems to think that the last days are near. Later, Roland goes to Sylvia Pittston's house and kicks her door in. They talk, and she tells him that Flag had been through recently and had impregnated her with a child, the child of the Crimson King, she says. Roland performs an abortion on the demon child with one of his pistols and manages to get the lady to tell him Flagg's location. She uses psychic ability to tell him that Flagg has stopped in the mountains on the other side of the desert to meditate. Roland then leaves Sylvia Pittston's home. He stops at Kennerly's and picks up his mule. He stops at the bar to see Alice, but she's not there. As he's making his way out of Toll, a trap that was left behind by the man in black is sprung. The whole town is out to kill him. Shimi has Alice held hostage as he approaches the gunslinger, and she confesses to Roland that she gave in and spoke the word 19 to Nort. Alice pleads with Roland to kill her, and he does, shooting both her and Shimi. The rest of the town, led on by Sylvia Pittston, make a play at the gunslinger, trying to kill him. Roland uses his six guns with the speed of lightning to cut down one after another of the town's people. Sylvia dies of four gunshot wounds to the head. Kennerly dies of a gunshot wound. A couple of townsfolk manage to stab Roland and slice his calf, but in the end, all of them die. Toll falls silent. 39 men, 14 women, and 5 children dead at the hand of the gunslinger. Afterward, Roland returns to the bar by himself and fries a few hamburgers. He eats and then moves on. The story returns to the present. When Roland finishes telling his story, he and Brown talk for a bit, then they shake hands and Roland leaves the farmer behind, making his way into the desert. Roland camps by himself and dreams dreams by the fire the first night away from Brown's hut. The next morning he moves on in his pursuit of the man in black. Chapter 2, The Way Station. Roland makes his way deep into the desert. He is dehydrated and has become weak. He stumbles, dizzy and hallucinating, through the sand and finally comes across two buildings, one of them looking like an old stable. He sees who he thinks is the man in black leaning against the stable. Finally, he thinks, the chase is over. He pulls his gun. Upon closer inspection, though, he sees that it isn't the man in black after all, but a blonde-haired little boy in blue jeans. The gunslinger reholsters his pistol, sways, and falls over on his face in the sand, passing out. When he wakes, he finds that the boy, Jake, has put hay underneath his head as a pillow. He talks with the boy and asks him who he is. Jake, though, doesn't clearly recall where he came from. His memory is vague. Roland then puts Jake into a state of hypnosis by dancing a bullet across his fingers. While hypnotized, Jake tells Roland about his life. He describes his life in New York City. He says that he likes bowling and reading novels and that he attended school. He says that he was murdered by being pushed in front of a moving car, a 1976 Cadillac, and that he thinks the man in black was the one who killed him. After Jake comes out of hypnosis, Roland enchants him again, putting him to sleep this time and promising him that he won't remember anything that came to him while he was under hypnosis. Roland ponders a while about his life as a boy, and then he goes to sleep himself. Upon awakening, Roland tells Jake that he will soon be leaving and that Jake will have to come with him. Jake tells Roland about a cellar underneath the stable and, preparing to leave, the gunslinger goes down a ladder into the cellar to see if there is anything worth taking along with them. While in the cellar, Roland hears a spirit from the other side of one of the walls, a speaking demon, and it has the voice of Alice, the woman from the bar in Tull. It warns him that Jake is a trap set for him by the man in black. 
The foundation of the cellar begins to crumble while the voice roars and Roland sees a hole open up in one of the walls. He smashes at it with his gun and the wall starts to crumble. He reaches his hand through the hole and pulls a jawbone with crooked teeth in it through the hole. The stable is rumbling now and Roland escapes up the ladder. Jake runs to him and hugs him and it's at that moment that Roland realizes he loves the boy. Afterward, the two leave the stable behind and head for the mountains. As Roland and Jake make it into the mountains, Roland thinks back on his history as a young gunslinger apprentice. The story turns to the memory of Roland. He remembers a day of taking instruction from the gunslinger teacher, Court. Cuthbert, Roland's friend and fellow gunslinger apprentice, was with him that day and they were training on how to use a hawk to catch doves. Cuthbert, using Roland's hawk, David, performs in an unsatisfactory manner and Court thumps him on the head. Afterward, Roland gathers his hawk and Cuthbert and the two of them leave the training ground to get some supper at Gilead Castle. In the castle kitchen, they meet the head cook, a man named Hax who feeds them and they go to a spot behind a colonnade to eat. While there, a couple of men come to meet Hax and Roland and Cuthbert overhear a private conversation between Hax and the men. They find out that Hax is a traitor and in league with the evil John Farson. John Farson is a man who started as a stage robber and who opposes the gunslinger government of Gilead. In support of Farson, Hax plans to poison the town of Tauntaun by sending them a load of poisoned meat. Later, Roland tells his father, Stephen Dees Chain, the lead gunslinger of Gilead, what he and Cuthbert overheard. Stephen says that Hax will hang. Roland tells his father that he wants to see the hanging. The day of the hanging, Roland and Cuthbert visit the gallows about an hour before anyone else arrives. They walk up onto the big wooden hanging rig and inspect it, Roland putting a splinter of wood in his pocket, and Cuthbert and Roland struggle with the implications of watching the hanging. Hax is brought in when the townspeople arrive, and the gunslinger Charles, son of Charles, is his hangman. Hax refuses to confess, and Charles yanks a lever, hanging the former cook of Gilead. The story turns to the present. Jake and Roland are making their way upon a large mountain when Jake spots the man in black climbing up it. Roland tells Jake that they might catch him on the other side and the two go to sleep for the night around a campfire. Chapter 3, The Oracle and the Mountains. They continue making their way toward Flag, walking at the base of the mountain. Roland shoots a rabbit and they stop to camp. While sleeping in the night, Roland dreams of the death of his former lover, Susan Delgado. He dreams of her being burned to death, and he also dreams of the death of Jake. Roland awakens to find Jake gone from the campsite. Jake has sleepwalked to a nearby wooded area and found a place with standing stones and an altar. Roland searches for and finds Jake, and Roland knows that an oracle resides here who may be dangerous. In a protective gesture, the gunslinger holds the jawbone up, forking his fingers in a sign that is a ward against the evil eye. He takes Jake back to the camp and ties him up to prevent him from wandering off again. The next day, Roland unties Jake and tells him that he has to leave for a while and instructs Jake to stay at the camp no matter what. He gives Jake the jawbone that he found in the cellar of the way station and tells him to pick it up and hold it in his hands if he feels strange or funny in any way. Roland takes his tobacco pouch out and sifts through it until he finds a little piece of paper. Inside the paper is a white pill containing mescaline and Roland takes it, explaining to Jake that it is a drug. He sits with Jake until the drug begins to take effect and then Roland leaves Jake behind, walking back into the wooded area headed for the Circle of Stones. Roland makes his way toward the Circle of Stones and the Oracle, and as he does, the drug hits him hard. He begins to hallucinate. He finds the Oracle, and she tries to sexually seduce him. He asks her for truth. He wants information that will help him on his quest for the tower. She tells him that three people are his fate. She tells him that a demon-infested man is number one and that the demon within the man is called heroin. She tells him to watch out for roses and unfound doorways. She says that a woman on wheels is the second part of his fate. She says that the third part of his fate is death, 
but not for him. After this, the two of them have sex. The Oracle alludes to the fact that Roland will betray Jake, and the gunslinger now knows that Jake will die as a pawn in his quest for the tower. After his meeting with the Oracle, the gunslinger returns to the campfire to find Jake, and the two begin to make their way up the mountainside to find the man in black. They stop for the night, and Roland tells Jake about his homeland of New Canaan, and then they sleep. After waking, they continue on climbing the mountain, using ropes to help get them up. They come to a river in a canyon, and Jake asks Roland if they can turn around. He tells Roland that he knows that the gunslinger is going to kill him. The two catch sight of the man in black and Roland fires his gun three times. He misses and the man in black taunts them both. Flag tells Roland that he will see him on the other side of the mountain and that they will hold long palaver. Roland gives Jake a chance to turn back on his own, but the boy continues on with him. Chapter 4, The Slow Mutants The two of them make their way through a passage under the Cyclopean Mountains, and Roland tells Jake a story about a feast and dance that he had attended as a boy in the Great Hall of the Castle Gilead called the Sewing Night Cotillion. He remembers Martin, the man in black, dancing with his mother. After Roland tells the tale, he goes to sleep. When they awaken, the two continue on their journey, and shortly before going to sleep one night in the mountains, Jake crawls away from the campsite in the dark. He crawls upon an old railroad and alerts the gunslinger. The two of them follow it and eventually come across a hand car. Jake shows Roland how the handle mechanism works and the two of them use it to get the train car moving along the track. They make their way steadily uphill and into the mountain in the train car. Roland doing most of the work with the lever, Jake taking his turn as well. As they go, Jake asks Roland for more of his history for more of the story with his teacher, Court. The story turns to the memory of Roland. Roland picks up his story with an encounter he has with Martin and his mother. As Roland is passing by his mother's quarters, Martin calls him into the room and mocks him. Martin tries to discourage Roland, to place doubt in his mind about becoming a gunslinger, and Flag also verbally abuses Roland's mother, Gabriel. They argue and, in a fit of rage, Roland leaves his mother and Flag behind to pursue court and take his gunslinger test. He goes to Court's house and kicks his door in, announcing himself. Roland tells his teacher that he is ready for his manhood test, and Court tells him that he is too young, and he encourages Roland to turn back. After some argument, Court accepts the challenge and Roland leaves to gather David, his hawk. Roland meets Court at the field behind the Great Hall, and Court gives him one final opportunity to turn back. They engage in battle, and Roland commands David to attack. The bird flies like a bullet from Roland's arm and digs its talons into Court's face. Court has no choice but to pound his own face in order to kill the bird, and Court is badly damaged. Roland picks up Court's staff and tells him to yield or die. Court yields and Roland becomes a gunslinger. Court gives Roland the key to the vault that holds his gunslinger revolvers. Afterward, Roland lays with the woman for the first time, a second rite of passage into manhood. The story turns to the present. The gunslinger and the boy continue on in the handcar when Jake sees a slow mutant and screams aloud. The green, glowing mutants have tentacles and are closing in on the tracks. Jake takes over the working of the handcar lever so that Roland can handle his six guns. One of them manages to snag Jake's leg with a tentacle and a tug of war begins between the monster and Roland, Jake in the middle. Roland fires a shot into the mutant and rescues Jake, and as they progress on the track, they realize that the mutants have piled rocks upon it. They hit the rocks and come to a stop, and Jake gets off the car and throws the rocks aside as Roland provides cover fire for him, killing several of the mutants. Jake jumps back onto the car and they regain their speed, moving further on into the dark. Three days later, they see a light and they come to a big cavern inside the mountain that has holes in the ceiling and they can see sunlight beaming through. They see various rail tracks and Jake mentions that it looks like a subway transfer station. They get off on a platform and find a series of old abandoned shops, one of them a weapons outlet. 
All of the guns are damaged, so Roland gets a bow and a quiver of badly weighted arrows. Jake fears getting back into the train car with Roland because he senses that he is soon to die. However, he rejoins the gunslinger and the two of them continue on. They make their way deep into the mountain and come to see a pinprick of light at the end of a long tunnel. They come to a point where the track is supported by nothing but an old trestle and the gunslinger and the boy get off of the train car and begin to walk along the last remaining bit of rail like acrobats. As they approach the end of the rail and come upon the light at the end of the tunnel, the man in black appears before them, taunting the gunslinger. Jake falls off the rail and catches himself on the trestle. He hangs over the abyss and pleads for Roland to help him up. Roland reaches for the jawbone, but finds that he has lost it. Flag starts to make off, and Roland, sensing his duty to the tower, leaves Jake behind to chase after the man in black. Jake falls from the ledge and says, Go, Go then. then! There, there are, are other, other worlds, worlds than, than these. these. Roland catches the man in black and fires his gun 12 times. All 12 shots miss, and the gunslinger follows after Flag into the place of counseling. Chapter 5, The Gunslinger and the Man in Black. The man in black leads the gunslinger to an ancient killing ground a Golgotha. Animal skulls surround and fill the place, laying on the ground. The man in black commands Roland to gather firewood, and when Roland brings a bundle of sticks back, the man in black uses magic to light a fire. Flag produces a rabbit from his robe, and Roland spits and cooks it. Flag then pulls out a deck of tarot cards to read Roland's future. He tells him that seven cards must be turned to prophesy the gunslinger's fate. The first card is a hanged man and Flag identifies Roland as that hanged man. The second card is a sailor, and Flag identifies him as Jake. The third card is a prisoner, and Flag does not identify him. The fourth card is the Lady of the Shadows. Flag says that the woman is two-faced, though he doesn't reveal her identity. The fifth card is death, and Flag turns it over. Flag tells Roland, death yet not for you. The man in black turns the sixth card, and it's the tower. The seventh card is called life, and is of a field of roses and blood. Flag says, life, but not for you. Roland reaches out to attack him, but the man in black puts a spell on Roland, causing him to fall to the ground and fall asleep. While asleep, Roland dreams of the man in black taking him on a trip of the universe. The size of it all scares Roland, and he begs the man in black to stop. Flag tells him he will stop the nightmare if Roland will give up his quest for the tower. Roland refuses. The gunslinger wakens after an undefined period and thinks the man in black has gone. But he is nearby, eating of the cooked rabbit. Flag tells about the universe and the tower, and tells Roland that this is only the beginning of the end. Flag philosophizes about the universe, size, science, or knowledge, if you can it. He talks about worlds and universes. He talks of the mind's inability to understand reality. He talks about galaxies and galaxies beyond galaxies, infinities beyond infinities. And he tells us that at the center of all infinities, there stands a tower and a room atop that tower. Flag speaks of the one who sent him, the Red King. He tells Roland that before the gunslinger can meet the Red King at the tower, he must first meet and slay the ageless stranger. He doesn't explain this, and we don't know yet if Flag is lying or telling the truth. He tells Roland that he is surprised that the gunslinger has caught up to him, and he agrees to tell Roland the truth about whatever he may wonder. Roland asks Flag if he will succeed on his journey for the tower. Flag does not answer. Roland then asks Flag where where he must go next on his journey. Flag tells him to go west to the sea. Where the world ends is where you must begin, says the man in black. Flag tells him that he will draw three, just as the oracle told him. Flag then ends the conversation. The gunslinger awakens by the campfire, finding that ten years have passed by. The lines of his face are deeper and rougher. He finds what appears to be the man in black, nothing but a laughing skeleton wrapped in a black robe. He yanks the jawbone away from the skeleton to replace the one lost while inside the mountain. Then he begins heading west. By that evening, he comes to the end of the land and finds the sea. He has his sandal wood gripped pistols and his resolve. The gunslinger dreams dreams of the dark.
Tower. And there you have it, Quartet, The Gunslinger by Stephen King. We are on our way to the Dark Tower. Please drop a like on this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel for more Stephen King, Dark Tower, and literary content. I will put the link for a guided tour of the second book in this series, The Drawing of the Three, down in the description for this video so that you can pick up right where we left off. I say thank you for joining me. Long days and pleasant nights, my friends.